Welcome back to the Pitch Pod, everyone. I am your host, Jeff Stebbins. With me, as always, my co-host, Joe Janner. Joe, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing well, Jeff. As always, happy to be a part of the Pitch Pod. Really looking forward to the conversation on this podcast. And again, glad to be back. Happy to be here. Looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. So Joe and I are going in a different direction this week. We're actually, for the first time, we're going to focus on an MLS match. It's going to be Sporting Kansas City versus the LA Galaxy. So that will be a fun one. Uh, But before we do that, we always like to go back and review the previous match that we looked at. And that was a fun Champions League match that Joe and I both watched. And it was it was an interesting outcome, you know, not too far off either of our predictions. But for those of you that missed it, it was Bayern versus PSG. Bayern ended up winning that match. And the overall score was... 2-0. 2-0. Is that correct, Joe? That's how it turned out to and then to advance on the 3-0 aggregate score to go into the next round. So it was a well-contested match, though I think the better team won it. And I think that's it's indicative of not only of the result, but but how they played and how they performed. And hopefully we can talk a little bit more about that tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, it was It was just such a fun game to watch, and there were some close calls all around. But as we both predicted, Bayern came away with a win like they did in the first leg. And it was noticeable that Neymar was out with an injury, sure. But, you know, PSG still got a lot of star power, right? They have Messi. They have Mbappe, two stars of the World Cup. You know, Messi is the Messi. He's one of the greats of all time. I don't think anyone disputes that. And Mbappe is going to be the future of the game, right? I don't think anyone really debates that either. So they they're loaded with star power, with guys that can score at will. It seems like, yet Bayern shuts them out, wins both legs, you know, fairly easily. I'll say. You know, how does that how does that happen when you're when you're going against a a loaded star power team like PSG? How does that happen, Joe? Well, did you say Messi was playing? I I was I wasn't quite sure that he had found himself onto the pitch. I mean, there was a couple of chances, a couple opportunities. But that's that's part of the, the issue, if you will. Part of what that result is indicative of is that, I mean, again, it's a it's 11 v 11 game. And when you have a player, well, yeah, when he shows up and he does what he needs to do, but few and far between moments, if you go back and watch, there's few and far in between moments where Messi was influential on this on this match and find himself in a position. I think there was one that maybe he could have, the goalkeeper made a save, but I think that's part of the, the analysis is to look at, I mean, again, I'm being facetious, obviously. Messi played all 90 minutes, but... Where where was his performance? Where was his star performance in this match? I mean, it was he knew what he was going into. They knew what they had to do. And I, and I think getting into a little bit of, of the result in the scoreline, when Byron gets their first in the second half, to then again be up two nil in the aggregate. I don't I didn't see much else out of PSG. No, that's exactly right. And and yeah, I I like that joke, uh, by the way, of yeah, was Messi playing or not? Yeah, surprisingly, a player of his caliber, he was in the game. He just wasn't doing much, which, you know, that leaves questions, you know, for sure. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't have – I can't explain it other than just having an off game, just not getting the touches. I, I really don't know. Um, it did look like Mbappe showed up. How would you feel about his performance for PSG? Yeah, you have to – look at every time he picks up the ball, just being such a dynamic player. It's really exciting to to watch whether you're a supporter or not. I mean, it's a player that is at that level that does, you know, if the system is in place to find opportunities for Mbappe to take a player one-on-one, that, that could that bode well for how PSG, again, through the league or how they've done well over the past. And then there was moments that showed up here. So, again, it's always exciting to see what he does. I think, again, we were talking prior to the show about 
what it could look like or means and opportunities for him to find himself in other competitions. Namely, as the talk had been before, whether you know Real Madrid was always after him in the transfer window earlier on. And you got to imagine there's always conversations, someone always prying into PSG's upper echelons of their management, trying to figure out what it would take. And I think you kind of counted all that. I won't speak for you, for you, Jeff, but I think you're kind of essentially saying, well, what's his motive or what would be his incentive to, to leave a, that type of situation and setting? Yeah, that, that, that's kind of been my take is, you know, if if someone like Mbappe is doing well uh, with his current setup and his, his current team, they're happy there. They're getting financially reimbursed as they should, as he is. And having success on the national level and, and making an impact, winning the Golden Boot at the World Cup, I, I get, you know, why there could be incentives to go to the EPL or another league. But from his perspective, I, I don't know if it's necessary. You know, I, as a fan of the EPL, I would love to see it, uh, especially if he's playing on my team. You know, I think that would be great. I. I'd be the first one out there to buy an Mbappe jersey, believe me. But I just I don't know if he has that incentive, if, if that motivation is there. Um, I feel like he's proved himself enough already uh, without having to make that transfer. It could be some time, too. I mean, he's still young, still young talent that could find himself, depending on where his contract positions him, to look for other opportunities out there. Hopefully it's not... 10 years from now, finding his way into the MLS <laughs> or again, I don't know if that's Jeff, maybe that's too quick on the segue to the, to the upcoming match. I know we have more to talk about with this. this one, but let's talk about well, I'd say, um, yeah, I, I do. Yeah. I, I'm not quite ready to segue. However, uh, as long as he's playing for my MLS team, you know, I'm okay with that as well. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. 10 years, 10 years from now, 12 years, 15 years from now, maybe yeah, okay. 15 years from now, I'll be, I'll be ready to buy that jersey. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you what, uh, before we kind of wrap up this, this review, I, I want to ask a couple more questions, including sure, our sure. man, our man of the match, but um, is it, you know, maybe I'm oversimplifying here, Joe, but when I watched that match, it looked like Bayern is a team that knows how to play together. And it looks like PSG is a team of kind of individuals. Is that what this boils down to? Is it not so much a talent disparity, but just one team that I don't want to say is less selfish, but one team that just knows how to play together versus a team of really talented players as individuals. Is, is that what this boils down to? I think there's a lot of that. I think if you want to go as far as probably giving some credit to their manager, in the, his role and what he does, that's I've always felt like first team managers responsibility is to whether they have the talent or not to make the most of what they're working with. And in this case, even with the talent, it definitely looked like a side that has an idea or a plan or what they want to do. Again, in this case, brilliant for me in a sense of what they would do when they were able to pick up the ball in important spots and transition quickly to attack. It was at a different pace. It was at a different urgency, a different level of intensity that PSG didn't really have much to answer for, especially through the midfield and, and working their way to the attacking third. I thought that then is indicative of a manager with a plan that's able to communicate that and has his players talented, yes, but playing together as a team. And I think that throughout the years, throughout the history of the sport, this one and others, those teams that learn how to play together well will always supersede those that just are, happen to have individual star talent on them. In a sense, leaning back to what PSG as you suggested. So I think that's what I think that's spot on, Jeff. I think in a sense what what we saw that, and it came out in both contests, especially the second leg here and at home with the supporters. That's why again I, I predicted they would win two. I thought maybe Mbappe shows up against the one, but the two goals that they scored, they, they were they were good. Yeah, he almost did have one. So yeah, uh, that was a close prediction for sure. Um, and and and. Before we do our man of the match, I just want to say hats off. You're right to the manager and, and to Byron for moving forward. Uh, that's really exciting for them and their fan base. And that counterattack that they did throughout the game was really impressive. So, uh, yeah, hats off to them. Congratulations as they move forward in this Champions League. It, it, it'll be fun to watch them. They're, they're, they're a fun team to watch, absolutely. Which brings us to our man of the match. Joe, who was your man of this last match? 
I think, in a sense, what I enjoyed is seeing a young talent like Luciella in the midfield be very much comfortable playing as a youth, younger player in that setting. I think that was what stood out to me in a sense that when, it's always exciting when you get a young player that's at that high level that's on the on the stage, if you will, to be able to perform. So I, I give my man of the match to Luciella, just being a contributor, just being a, a really big part of influence in the game and something that, again, looked looked excited, looked like he was having fun. I always talk about that even at the youth level, up at the professionals. Do you enjoy what you're doing? That, that would be an important question for managers to ask, even professionals. Are you enjoying what you're doing? Because that shows up on the pitch. And that's those are the type of points. That's also part of going back to what a manager can do in a leadership role is, is inspire his players or her players to do what they need to do to, to enjoy what this is all about. It's it's, it's performing in, in the game of sport. So I think the individual player that I saw that from was Luciela. So I would, I'll give him the man of the match. Yeah. I really like what you said there. Yeah. You have to enjoy the game. I, I agree. Uh, my player of the match was Byron's defender to and with his save at the first half, PSG had more or less a wide open net as the goaltender, the keeper for Bayern came out a little bit too far and it got messy for a second. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, he slides and saves a goal. It was just really an exciting play, but also a huge, I mean, I, had PSG scored that, gone up 1-0 early on, I mean, the momentum of the game could have been very altered. It would have affected the fans and the stadium. I, I, so to me, that was just I, the game-changing moment. Like that save, um, it, it was that was quite a play that, that he pulled off. So that's my man of the match. Well, a couple different selections, a couple – interesting viewpoints to to add to our analysis of this game uh, again I thought it was exciting and like, as you suggested I'm really looking forward to see what Byron does as they continue to go into this contest absolutely absolutely so switching we're now going to focus on the MLS matchup that uh, Joe and I um, are kind of excited about too as this is our first MLS match coverage it's sporting Kansas City versus the Los Angeles Galaxy, two teams in the Western Conference of the MLS. None of them are, uh, neither of these teams are really ranked at the top of their conference. And it, it, neither of them are expected necessarily to have outstanding seasons, but it should make for a fun match. And, and both teams at this point are assumed to be fairly equal in talent and uh what they what 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 they could achieve this year most people have them kind of ranked um within the league uh fairly at a similar level so this is going to be a fun match to look at because it should be competitive and a nail biter i'm hoping um but it's also a fun match for joe and myself as we are admittedly biased Right, we live in the Kansas City area, so we have to root for Sporting Kansas City. Although we did put in for press passes, didn't we, Joe? I'll, I'll pause you on the have to uh, bit in the sense that <laughs> we're here and, and we, we we came back home, if you will, to feature an MLS match. And looking at where they're at with Sporting Kansas City, three games, this being their third game, and without a win, to be at home after having a couple games on the road limited production I think maybe just one goal in the two and then a LA Galaxy who I, I can think back several years ago that was always a marquee matchup if you will I think Kansas Cityans and those that were supporting I'll, I'll go ahead and speak it uh Jeff uh those of us that were followers of the Kansas City Wizards yeah. always look forward to the LA Galaxy return so you know this is when talking about times when, when Beckham was on the on the team and all this but we won't go too far down memory lane let's get back right up to you this one again LA Galaxy this would be their second game. They, they lost their first. And kind of like you said, I mean, with where we're at in the season, it's really difficult to say that one side is going to be more, you know, keen to, to be a higher performing side than the other. And I think that's kind of probably close to what we're going to get. I know looking at Sporting Kansas City, Johnny Russell's out. I mean, talk about just being excited about individual players and looking at what he does. I, I think from whether you're here, there, whatever, wherever, looking when you see Johnny Russell – 
the way that he goes about performing out in the wing oftentimes, picking up the ball, taking on a player one-on-one. It's exciting to watch that style of play for sure. And him not being a part of this, I think that's going to diminish the opportunity for Sporting KC to have a more than average opportunity or chance or probability, if you will, to win this one. Yeah, absolutely. And I, as a, as a fan, um, Johnny Russell is the player I'm most excited to watch for sporting Kansas city. I, I agree. He's, he's the goal scorer by MLS standards where he, the organization's paying him pretty, pretty darn well because he can put the ball in the back of the net and, and that's who fans show up to see. So him being out, that is going to definitely impact the, um, the game and could, could impact the, uh, outcome as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's going to be a fun matchup and, and Joe, I don't want to rush you here, but I, I think I, I think I know what direction I want to go in here. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to let the fact that you and I did not get press passes for this match. I'm, I'm willing to let that slide. And I promise to not be biased in this prediction. Well, I'll just check my watch. That's like I have to be anywhere, but I am kind of wondering if that, uh, Message is just kind of on its way, kind of halted up in the technological pipeline. Whereas, yes, the, the pitch pod would be exciting to be there live to cover this match. Whether we're there or not, we're still good sports about all this, Jeff. And, and getting right to it, at home, third game, a lot of hype. It's going to be exciting in the atmosphere regardless of which side you support and how much your support goes towards the Kansas City side. They're going to win this one. They win this one at home. How they go about getting the one goal, probably. I think that's what I'm going to see. Could they get a second? Really probably for them, getting one goal and keeping the opposition to score zero for a one-nil win is, is closest to what I see this happening, this upcoming match. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see that. I could see that happening very easily. You know, uh, I agree. The sporting fan base, they're going to come out, cheer their team on. It's going to be fun no matter what. I'm going to go sporting win this as well. You know, if Johnny was playing, maybe they get an extra goal here or there. Uh, I think I, you know, not to copy you here, but I'm going to go one nil sporting wins this. And I think that their goal could easily come off of a corner. Oh, well, okay. That's, that's a whole other layer. of predict- oh, So, so we're on, look at us. Here it is. Pitch pod in a consensus in an agreement that sporting will win with a score line of one to nil. Yeah, and and you know what? Had we got the press passes, we would have been reporting to you guys live. But uh, I am working on letting that go, and uh, <laughs> let it go. Yeah, it will be all right. We'll be all there's, right. There's future opportunities. You know, there's- we're here, Joe and I, the Pitch Pod. We are available. We will go wherever. Uh, but it just wasn't meant to be for this matchup, apparently. So we're looking forward to the game. We hope everyone gets a chance to tune in. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. That's the best way to support us here at the Pitch Pod. And as always, keep pitching out there, everyone. In a game, the round ball, round posts, anything can happen.